Okay, welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to talk about tables, divs, and forms. So let's just jump right into it. So a table is created by adding the table tag. And a table will essentially store a large amount of data, say for like our customers. If you wanted to display something that has rows and columns, kind of like an Excel spreadsheet. So we have two different elements to our table, which is the table head and the table body. So let's start off with the table head. And inside of our table head, we're going to have a table row. And inside of the row, we're going to have separate columns. And we're going to specify that with the TH tag, which stands for table head. So we're going to create a table of users data or customers data that has, we'll say name, email, and age. So if I were to save that, we go back here and reload, you can see that we get the standard table right here. It doesn't look too pretty. We could always change the styles with CSS. But right now we're just going to work with the default styles. So we have our table head. We also need to create the body for our table. So we'll start off with table body. And inside of the table body, we're also going to have table rows. And instead of the TH tag for table head, we're going to use TD for table data. And this is going to specify the column for the name, the email and the age accordingly. So let's say that we have Frank Jones. And then we have his email and his age. So we'll say that the email is frank at awesome.com. And then we have his age here. So let's save that, go back here and reload. And you can see what our table looks like right there. So we have name, email, age, and then we have the table data right below that. So I could always duplicate this because you probably have more than one row inside of your table. So we'll change the last name to Frank Smith and Frank, we'll say Jefferson. Okay, so reloading that, you can now see that our table looks like a table. We have the table head and the data for our table right here. And like I said, again, the table is used for displaying large amounts of data. Like if you wanted to display your customer's info or your user's data, you would use tables for displaying data and not really creating layouts. Like you wouldn't have one column be a sidebar and then one column be like the main content. So instead, if you wanted to accomplish that, you would use divs and a div is pretty much a container. So I would like to think of a div as a way of containing other elements, or you could even think of it as a box if you want. And with that said, how about we just create a simple box? So I'm going to create a red box. I'm going to say div. I'm going to add an attribute called style. So I'm going to add some inline styles. I'm going to say that I want the background to be red. And we'll give it a width and height of 200 pixels. So how about I save that and we go back here and reload. And you can see that a div is just simply enough a block or a container, like we can add some data inside of this box and just say hello. So now if I were to duplicate this div and I were to reload the page, you can see that we have two boxes on top of each other. And that is because divs are block elements as opposed to inline elements. We could do something which is called float. So we could say that we want this element to float left. And if we reload, And if we reload, you can now see that the boxes are floating left right next to each other. But let's take that off right now. And I want to show you something else that's kind of like a div, but it's not inline. So there's another element that's called span that you can use. And these span elements are display inline, and they're essentially a container similar to a div, but they're inline as opposed to block. So if I save that and we reload, you can see that those are automatically displayed side by side. Okay, so now let's jump into creating forms. And a form is a way of allowing a user to add some input into your website or your web application. And typically when you work with forms, you are submitting that form to a server side application, which we do not have set up yet. So for the purpose of these videos, we're just going to show you how you can display the forms. We're not actually gonna show you how to create a functioning form, we will show you that later on in future videos. So to start off a form, we're going to of course use the form tag, and there are a few attributes that you can include in your form. 
and the action is the name of the file that you are submitting this form to, which we will get to later on. And there are two different types of method, which is a post and a get. And the difference between the two is that if you use a post, it is just going to submit it directly to the file. If you use a get, it is going to add some get parameters. So if you submit the form, it might add something like email equals John Doe at gmail.com. But we're just going to leave those attributes up there in the form, and they're not going to function until later on until we learn about server-side scripting. So how about we create our first input element? So the most common input element is of type text. So if I were to say this and reload, we get a nice input element right here. And you know what I'm gonna do, just so you don't have to stare at the bottom of the screen, is I'm going to add a div here at the bottom with a height of 600 pixels. And now we'll have a little bit of room to work with right here. Okay, so for our input, it is a self-closing element, so we don't actually have to close the input like we do with other elements. So there are typically two attributes that you will want to include with your input, which is the type, and then you also need to specify the name. And we could say that this is going to be email, and the name is actually going to be how you fetch the information that the user has typed from your server-side language. So when we also have an input, we typically also have a label at the top that the user knows what this input is for. So we could say label, email address, and reload, and we have our label and our input form. Now there is an attribute that you typically also include with a label, and you're telling it what you are using this label for, and we're going to use it for this email input. And you can see it doesn't show anything different, but that is just simply for good semantic HTML. Okay, so let's duplicate this, and maybe we want to have a name input. And we save that and reload, and you can see that these are all loading right next to each other because these are display inline elements. So we have our input type of text. There are also a few more, which is like our dropdown, we have a radio box, a checkbox, and a text area. There's a few more, but those are the basic ones that we're going to cover. So let's start off with creating our checkbox. Let's say that we want to ask the user if they want to subscribe. So we'll have an input type equals checkbox, and we can say that this is checked, and name is going to be subscribe. So you can see that they can check this and uncheck, and that is a just typical checkbox. Next, we may also want to have some radio boxes, and I'm going to wrap this in a div just so it falls on its own line. So maybe we want to specify whether this person is a male or female, so we could say gender, and of course, I would probably want to include this as a label. And then we'll say input type equals radio, and the name is going to be gender, and the value is going to be male. So let's duplicate that. And if we go back here and reload, we now have our male and female radio checkbox. And of course, we could also add the attribute of checked, and by default, it would have male as checked. So instead of this radio checkbox, what if we wanted a dropdown? Well, we could easily do that with a select dropdown. So we'll say select, and the name is going to be gender. And inside of our dropdown, we have a few options. So we're going to use the option tag. And for the option tag, we're going to specify a value, which is going to be male. And we'll duplicate this for female. And if we reload, we now have our a drop down right there. And one more element that we should probably have for most forms is a submit button. So we can say input type equals submit. And if we reload, we have our submit button right here. And you can also add a value equals save. If we reload, now that says save instead of submit. Okay, so one more that I want to cover before closing out the video is the text area element. So we can just write out text 
area. And the text area is a little bit different because this does have a closing tag. And the data that you add inside of it is going to be the content that's inside of your multi-line text area. So we could say, hello there. We want to give it a name of body. And let's reload that. And you can see that we have our multi-line text area right here. Okay, so we just covered tables, divs, spans, form, form elements. And there's one more that I want to talk about, which is called a block quote. And this is typically for adding, say like a quote to your website. So you can start that off with block quote, and then say, those who teach learn. So that would be a quote, and you can see that it has its own styles. And that's kind of just a common element for displaying quotes on your website. So I think we are going to finish this video right there. Uh, we covered quite a bit in this video. We've just covered all of the basic HTML tags. We had headings, paragraphs, links, images, lists, tables, divs, forms, and form elements. And if it may seem like a lot, but once you wrap your head around it, it's really not too much. And I would recommend playing around with some of these elements, checking out websites that you like, and kind of seeing what they do, because the best way to get good at something is just to continue practicing. So I hope you found this video useful and I will see you in the next lesson.